Welcome to Sci-Fi Recap. Today we will be recapping a film called Accident Man 1 and Accident Man 2. The story begins with a drunken man entering his house. When he was inside, the man intended to take a watch from the top of the cupboard. But suddenly, the man was snared from behind. It turns out that the drunk man is the target of a very violent hitman. It is known this hitman named Mike Fallen and every time he finishes his target, Mike always makes his victims look like they died from an accident. After finishing off his target, Mike went to a nightclub to relax, but upon arrival, Mike saw some mobster who was bothering a woman. Mike, who felt uncomfortable with their behavior, he also without hesitation beat the mobsters. After being satisfied teaching them, Mike finally decided to return to headquarters. Here as known that Mike is part of a team whose members are all professional hitmen. They also finish off their targets in different ways. The first one is named Pete. Pete always finishes his targets by using a poison. The second named Cliff always finishes his targets in a brutal way using a ship. Third, there are two brothers, Mick and Mac. They are former special forces who finish their targets as if they were killed by robbers or gangsters. The fourth is Fred who eliminates his targets with his keen eye for objects around him. The fifth is Jane, who is a sword expert. Jane always teases her target to get aroused first. Then after that, Jane will finish off her target with a sword. Then the last one is named Big Ray. Ray is the chairman or leader of all these hitmen, and Ray is also the one who founded this organization. That is told that Ray has made one absolute rule, which is that all members must behave professionally. Even when a friend or relative of one of the members must be targeted, then the member must not feel resentment or anger towards other fellow members. But if the rule is broken, then Ray will expel him from the team and tell all the other members to hunt down the violator. Shortly thereafter, introduced to an old man who has just arrived, named Milton. Milton is known to be a person who always meets with each client and then chooses one of the hitmen according to the method of murder desired by the client. This means that the hitman will never know who the client has sent them, except Milton. After that, Milton assigned Mike to finish off a heavy metal band by making it look like they died in an accident, according to Mike's expertise. But before that, Mike must first complete his unfinished mission yesterday. If Mike could finish everything by tomorrow night, then his client was willing to pay double. The next day, Mike would first complete his unfinished mission. It was seen that his target was waiting for a pickup on the side of the road. Then when the opportunity arose, Mike shot the tires of a speeding car, make the car to skid and hit the target, who was on the side of the road to death. In the end, Mike could make his target look as if he had died from being hit by a car. Then Mike decided to go home to prepare for the next mission. Until when he was at home, Mike suddenly remembered his memories with his ex-girlfriend named Beth. Actually, Mike has been dating Beth for a long time, but he prefers to leave Beth for their own safety. That evening, Mike immediately started his mission, which was to finish off a heavy metal band. Mike was seen disguised as an audience at the band's concert. Then after listening to two songs, Mike poured water on the electricity flowing to the stage, make all the heavy metal band personnel to be electrocuted. Then when Mike wanted to return home, he was suddenly attacked by a man on a motorcycle. But fortunately, Mike was able to keep up with the person, until in the end Mike could beat him. Then Mike contacted Milton to ask why he was suddenly attacked by an unknown person. Milton replied that he didn't know, and he would immediately investigate with Ray, the team leader. Then Mike told Milton, because of the attack, he asked for the fee to be quadrupled. Long story short, while Mike was resting, he suddenly got a message from a woman named Charlie Adams. Here Charlie explains that she is a close friend of Mike's ex-girlfriend, Beth. Then Charlie tells him that Beth has just died, and her body will be buried on Sunday. Hearing the news, Mike looks very shocked, because it turns out that Mike still really loves Beth. A few days later, on Sunday, Beth's funeral ceremony took place. Then after everyone dispersed, Mike was seen coming to Beth's grave while carrying flowers. Shortly Charlie, who was a close friend of Beth, approached him, saying that Beth was killed, even though at that time Beth was pregnant with Mike's child. Hearing this, Mike was devastated because all this time, he didn't know that Beth was pregnant with his child. While at home, Mike accidentally saw the news about Beth's death.
It is known that Beth was an environmental activist who often protested against foreign oil drilling companies, especially since the oil drilling would clearly damage the environment. Then Mike, who felt he couldn't still silent, finally decided to check the scene of Beth's death. Arriving at the scene of the crime, Mike, who is a professional, can immediately imagine and predict how the murder was committed. Initially, the perpetrator entered through the window, then injected a drug to make Beth overdose. Then the perpetrator also stamped the knife several times into Beth's body, so that Beth's death looked like she was killed by a robber or gangster. After analyzing for a long time, Mike was able to conclude that there were two perpetrators, and they were none other than two brothers, Mick and Mac. It is known that Mick and Mac's expertise is to kill their targets to make it look like they were killed by gangsters. Long story short, Mike immediately went to Mick and Mac at the residence. Upon arrival, Mike Fallon threw Beth's death file while asking if the two of them had killed Beth. At first, Mac didn't want to admit this. But in the end, Mick said honestly that they were only doing their job professionally. Hearing that, Mike immediately beat them up, because actually they also knew that Beth was Mike's ex-girlfriend. It turned out that even though Mike Fallon was alone, he kuwad overthrow them both, until Mick decided to give up and apologize to Mike Fallon. Then Mike Fallon explained that Beth was pregnant with his child. Mick replied that they certainly didn't know, because they only did their job according to the mission given. After that, Mike immediately looked for Milton to the headquarters to ask who the client was wanted Beth's death. However, when he arrived there, it turned out that Milton was not at the headquarters. Then Mike told Ray about Beth's death, their team leader. Here Ray tries to explain that Mike shouldn't feel resentment, because all of this is just a job. Then Ray also emphasized that Mike should never forget their absolute rules. If Mike continues his grudge, then Ray will not hesitate to call on all team members to hunt down Mike. Hearing this, Mike looked upset. However, he couldn't be angry with Ray, because Ray already considered him as his own biological father. Then Mike decided to go see Charlie. Upon arriving at Charlie's house, Mike said that Beth had been killed by a professional, and for that he wanted Charlie to help him. Until when they were talking, Cliff suddenly attacked them brutally. A fight ensued. However, in the end Cliff was made dying by Mike using his own axe. Here Mike also asked who was the person had sent Cliff, but Cliff didn't answer that and only said that he was just working. And the real target was Charlie, not Mike. Charlie, who saw Mike's action earlier, then asked who Mike and the person who had attacked him really was. Then Mike explained that he was a hitman, while those who attacked them earlier were Mike's colleagues. After that, Mike asked back about what Beth's secrets Charlie knew, because the hitman intended to finish Charlie, not finish Mike. Charlie told him that she only knew about foreign companies that were drilling for oil, and for more details, Charlie will look for a copy of the data stored by Beth at her parents' house. Hearing this, Mike also asked Beth to contact him immediately if she had found a copy of the data. After that, Mike went to the massage parlor to look for Milton, because Milton usually liked to enjoy and get massage there. Incidentally, there was also Fred and a guard in the place. Until when Mike asked Fred where Milton was, the guard wanted to kick Mike out. Until Mike elbowed the guard to the ground. Then Fred, who was afraid that he would be beaten too, finally told Fred that Milton was inside. After that, Mike without hesitation beat up the masser and asked Milton about the client who had told Milton to kill Beth. Milton replied that he couldn't tell Mike because client confidentiality must be kept strictly secret. Milton also said that if Ray found out about Mike's behavior, then Ray would definitely tell all team members to kill Mike. But Mike, who already didn't care, he continued to beat Milton. Until finally, Milton, who was no longer hold beaten, then he said that the client was named Leonard Kent. After finding out, Mike decided to leave. But when in front of the massage parlor lobby, Mike was threatened by Fred that he would report all this to Ray. So without thinking, this is what Mike did, he took a yellow pager phone book to beat Fred. When Mike had left the massage parlor, Charlie suddenly called him and said that Charlie had gotten a copy of the data stored at Beth's parents' house. Then Charlie invited Mike to meet tonight at a bus stop. Long story short, Mike finally met Charlie at the bus stop. Here Charlie tells that at this time, 
Beth had succeeded in stopping oil drilling owned by a foreign company. But unfortunately, six months later, the foreign company returned to drilling oil after they bribed members of the House of Representatives. Until Beth could find evidence of a copy of the bribe from an insider. Then, when Beth planned to spread the evidence to the media, that's when Beth suddenly died. And to be clear, all the evidence is in the box. Charlie also told him that one of the oil company officials was named Leonard. Hearing Leonard's name, Mike also remembered Milton's words, which he said he was also ordered by someone named Leonard. In the end, Mike plans to immediately find Leonard and go to him. The scene moves to Ray, the head of the Hitman team where all the team members have gathered, including the people who were previously beaten by Mike. Here, Ray looks very angry at Mike, because Mike has violated the absolute rules of their organization. Even Ray also knew that Cliff, the axe expert, had been killed by Mike. Then, Ray asked all his members to hunt down Mike tonight, according to the rules. Meanwhile, Jane, the sword expert, was assigned to look after their main client. Long story short, Mike had found Leonard's residence, and without hesitation, he immediately beat him up. Then Mike asked if Leonard was the mastermind behind Beth's death. At first, Leonard didn't want to confess, but after being threatened with being thrown from a height, Leonard finally said that he was only ordered by his boss named Adelzim. Here, Leonard also tells that Adelzim is the owner of an oil drilling company. While the reason Beth was killed, because Beth had a copy of the evidence regarding the bribery committed by Adel Zim. Then Mike asked who had arranged her murder. Leonard didn't know his name, but he recorded all conversations with the person who arranged it. Not long after, they were surprised by the arrival of Mick and Mac, who were sent to finish off Mike Fallon. In the middle of the fight, Mick was able to be fooled by Mike Fallon, which made Mick have to shoot at his own brother Mac. Seeing this, Mick was even more angry, so a fight ensued. After that, Mike immediately went outside, but apparently Pete suddenly appeared to poison Mike. Until without thinking, this is what Mike did, he dueled and Mike could oppose Pete to fall from a height. Downstairs, Fred also apparently wanted to confront Mike, but Mike, who felt sorry for him, decided to just hit Fred, making him faint. Before leaving, Mike had taken Fred's bag, in which there was a poisonous plaster, which read Adskins. Then Mike immediately went to Adelzim's residence. Long story short, Mike got there and he slowly climbed up so he could go straight to the upper room. Then the scene shows Adelzim who is chatting with Jane and is guarded by two bodyguards. But at the same time, Mike suddenly appeared and he easily flattened the two guards. Here Jane tells Adelzim to enter the room while Jane herself will try to fight Mike. But in the end, Mike was able to finish Jane off with Jane's own katana sword. Adel Zim, who saw that Jane was dead, tried to offer Mike any amount of money. However, Mike, whose girlfriend and future child had been killed, finally confirmed Adel Zim. After feeling his revenge was avenged, Mike returned to the headquarters while carrying Jane's katana sword. Seen there are Ray and also Milton. Then Ray said that he was very disappointed with Mike because Mike had broken the rules and finished off all the teams that Ray had worked hard to create. Then Mike responded that all of this started with Milton. Even Milton himself had sent a hitman who rode a motorcycle to finish off Mike. Not only that, Milton has also collaborated with Adel Zim to betray Ray. At first, Milton didn't want to confess, but soon Milton couldn't move when Mike played the evidence of Milton's voice recording with Adel Zim. Ray, who heard the recording, he was immediately angry and beat Milton. After being beaten, Milton tried to apologize for all his mistakes. Then casually, Mike says that we've all made mistakes. Then Mike gave Milton a plaster to treat his wounds. But moments after that, Milton suddenly died because the plaster contained the deadly poison he got from Fred earlier. After Milton died, Ray remained disappointed with Mike and decided to stop all this business. Then Ray asked Mike to go as far as possible and no longer see him. Then Mike left there with the intention of retiring from his job. After that, the movie Accident Man was end. At the beginning of this sequel story, people are shown enjoying music in an empty building that is no longer used. There was a DJ who was protesting to the committee because the fireworks weren't lit big enough. Until finally, the committee added the firework gas, and an explosion occurred. Instead of being sad, 
The people there laughed when they saw the DJ on fire. Not long after, a man appeared, and it turned out to be Mike. Predictably, the incident was the work of Mike, who is a hitman. Deliberately, Mike placed a bomb in the fireworks gas because the DJ was Mike's target. As a result, the DJ was killed, as if it was an accident. After that, Mike left to return home. Arriving home, Mike looked happy because the payment from his client had just been transferred. It was told that since Mike had finished off his friends in London, he now chose to settle in Malta. As Mike was laughing to himself, he was suddenly attacked by someone, and a fight was inevitable. In the middle of the fight, the person kicked Mike in the crotch, making Mike to be cornered. But immediately the person stopped attacking, after Mike said the word, Flamingo. When the face cover was removed, it turned out that the person who attacked Mike was a woman named Wong Siu Ling. It turns out that the word Flamingo is the key word that stops Siu Ling from attacking. That's because Siu Ling herself is the person Mike deliberately paid, just to attack him when Mike got home. Mike did this deliberately to train his instincts, and also as penance for his friends who had Mike killed when in London. After that, Siu Ling immediately asked Mike for her fee, then she left. Later that night, Mike accidentally saw someone who was being beaten by a nightclub bouncer. When Mike approached him, it turned out that the person was Fred, Mike's former partner. Quickly, Mike immediately beat up the nightclub bouncers, then took Fred away from there. On the way, Mike thought that Fred was deliberately sent by Big Ray, his former boss, to arrest Mike. However, Fred swears that he came here just to meet a woman he knows on social media and hasn't met until now. Hearing this, Mike believed it and immediately took Fred to his house. Arriving home, Mike had to be attacked again by Sue Ling, Mike's own hired woman, until finally Mike said the word Flamingo and made Xu Ling stop attacking. After that, Mike introduced Siu Ling to Fred, then Siu Ling left. Here, Fred asks Mike for help, to join him in looking for a woman he knows on social media. Mike replied that it was better to forget about her, because she was probably just deceiving Fred. Fred also asked Mike for permission to stay here for some time. Fred promised that he would help Mike in eliminating each of his targets. Mike allowed Fred to stay in his house. The next day, Fred began to help Mike in carrying out his mission. Their first one was to take out the old man and to make his death look like a system accident. Secondly, their target was a drunken man. Here Fred disguised himself as a woman who would suck the drunkards. Then from above Mike dropped a ladder, and this is what happened. The man was crushed to death by the fire escape ladder. Since Mike has been with Fred, their business has improved. Mike is now able to buy a warehouse which he will use for their headquarters. At the headquarters, Mike and Fred designed a device, which they would use to kill each of their targets to make it look like an accident. At the same time, Fred tells Mike that they currently have a job offer, which is to kill someone who is the son of Mrs. Suzer. Hearing this, Mike asked Fred to reject the offer. Mike explained that Mrs. Suzer was the head of the city's most feared mafia. Therefore, they shouldn't get into trouble with Mrs. Suzer. The next day, Mike and Fred went back to their target who was a businessman. When the target called, suddenly a bathtub fell on him from the hole in the roof. It turns out that it was Mike and Fred who made a hole in the bathroom floor above. But when they had completed their mission, suddenly Mike and Fred's necks were stuck with stun gun bullets. After that they were stung until they became unconscious. When they woke up, Mike and Fred were already on top of the building with tied up. Then came a man who immediately taught Mike. Here, Mike even laughed, because the man's punch was very weak for a Mike. Not long after that came Mrs. Suzer. This is the person. It turns out that Mike and Fred were caught by Mrs. Suzer's men. Here, Mrs. Suzer accuses Mike, that this time they will finish off her son. This is Mrs. Suzer's son named Dante. Dante is Mrs. Suzer's only child who is a little bit silly. He is very ambitious to become a pop singer, but until now it hasn't yet been achieved. Mike, who felt that he had no intention of killing Dante, asked Mrs. Suzer to check the CCTV. That's because then Mike and Fred will be proven innocent. Fred also said that he did get an offer to finish off Dante, but because they respected Mrs. Suzer, they refused the offer. 
Hearing this, Mrs. Suzer clearly didn't immediately believe it. Until finally Mrs. Suzer will take Fred as hostage, then ask Mike to look after Dante and finish off all the hitmen who intend to finish off Dante. If Mike betrays or doesn't obey all orders from her, then certainly Fred will be finished. In the end, Mike was released, and inevitably he had to obey all Mrs. Suzer's orders. It was revealed that Mrs. Suzer was currently at odds with a rich mob boss in Russia. The Mafia boss held an appeal to all hitmen in Europe to kill Dante, who was Mrs. Suzer's only son. Shortly after that, Mike went to the cafe to calm his mind. But while inside, Mike meets Big Ray, who was his former boss in London. Here Ray explains that his arrival here is not to arrest Mike, but to finish off Dante, whose head is valued very big price by the Russian Mafia boss. Mike explains that he is currently assigned to protect Dante, because if Dante gets hurt, then Mrs. Suzer will be take Fred's life at stake. But unfortunately, Ray doesn't care, and he will still hunt Dant down. Big Ray also informed them that a tracking device had been installed on Dant's watch, which would make it easier for all the hitmen to locate him. Hearing this, Mike immediately went to a bar to meet Dant, who was practicing vocals. Once there, Mike immediately broke Dan's watch that he was wearing. But the silly Dante instead ate the watch machine, so that the tracking device was automatically in Dan's body. Dante deliberately did this, because his watch was very, very rare in this world. After that, came a hitman nicknamed the Grim Reaper, who currently intends to finish off Dante. Until the fight was inevitable. In the middle of the fight, Mike was defeated. But when the man wanted to finish off Dante, suddenly Mike stabbed the woman in the neck from behind. After that, Mike took Dante to leave the place immediately. On the way, Mike was contacted by Mrs. Suzer. Here Mrs. Suzer asks Mike to immediately bring Dante home alive, because if not, then Fred will die at the hands of Mrs. Suzer. Mike replied that he was a hitman, not a babysitter. Actually, Mike was very fed up with Dante's ridiculous behavior. But for the sake of Fred's safety, Mike was no choice to promise that he would bring Dante home safely. Shortly thereafter, Mike took Dante to the pharmacy to buy laxative drugs. Mike quickly stuffed all the drugs into Dante's mouth, so that Dante could defecate to remove the tracking device he had eaten. After that, Mike intends to take Dante to his base first, because Mike's weapon tools is now running out. While on the way, Mike was attacked again by a hitman, until Mike returned to the duel. In the middle of the fight, Mike tried to take Dante away. Then Mike put Dante in a room, while he would fight again with the hitman. Until finally Mike was able to finish off the hitman. Quickly, Mike immediately took Dante out, then brought him to his place. Once there, Mike asked Dante to immediately remove the tracking device by defecating. However, because Dante didn't have a bowl movement, he couldn't remove the tracking device. Mike, who was very upset, was forced to beat Danta until he passed out. After that, Mike had to be attacked again by Siu Ling, Mike's hired woman. Fortunately, Mike immediately said the word Flamingo, which made Xu Ling stop attacking. Then Siu Ling said that she currently intends to become a hitman like Mike, but Mike forbade it because it was actually a very bad job. At the same time, Mike was again visited by a long-haired hitman. Here, the long hair immediately pointed a gun at Mike, then asked Mike to immediately just hand over Dante. But suddenly came another hitman who looked like a clown. The clown immediately beat the long hair using his hammer, making the long hair unconscious. Then the clown asked Mike to immediately just hand over Dante. But because Mike refused, the clown immediately attacked him. At the same time, long hair was seen who had just woken up from his stupor and immediately attacked Siu Ling. When the four of them were busy fighting, Dante was seen who had realized and tried to defecate to remove his tracking device. Until finally, with great pride, Dante was able to remove the tracking device. Moving on to Mike, who was still busy dealing with the clown. They fought each other. Until finally Mike was able to finish off the person. And Siu Ling was also able to finish off the long hair using a chain. Shortly after that, another Asian hitman arrived who immediately pointed at Dant using his sword. Seeing this, Mike immediately challenged the Asian man to a duel to the death to win Dante. Without hesitation, the Asian man agreed to Mike's challenge, so the fight ensued again. 
In the middle of the fight, Mike seemed to be struggling against the Asian man. Until when the Asian man wanted to finish off Mike, suddenly someone shot the Asian man to death. It turns out that the person is Ray, who currently also intends to finish off Dante. Then Mike begged Ray not to finish off Dante for the safety of their friend, Fred. At first, Ray still refused, even chasing Mike. But because Ray already considered Mike like his own son, he finally yielded and complied with Mike's request. A few hours later, Mike and Ray delivered Dant to be exchanged for Fred, who is currently still being held by Mrs. Suzer. Once there, the exchange was made. Mike manages to deliver Dante safely, then takes Fred. Here Mike and Fred return to the car to meet Ray. Dante is also seen being scolded by Mrs. Suzer because of his ridiculousness, but suddenly had exploded. It turns out that Don's body has been fitted with a time bomb by Ray because he has finished off Dante, and they automatically win the prize made by the Russian Mafia boss, and because of that, they will soon get a lot of money. A few days later, Mike and Fred are shown enjoying coffee at a cafe. Then, suddenly, Su Ling came carrying the woman Fred had been looking for. Fred looked very happy because now he had found his life partner. At the same time, this assassin man's sequel end.